We're here on the Zulfa Springs on the Peace River, and we're going to teach you how to unearth Florida's history. Where in the world can you travel 35 million years back in time and still make it home for dinner? We're talking about Wachula, Florida. This quiet little southwest Florida town, home to just under 5,000 of the friendliest folks you'll ever meet, is the perfect place for a fossil hunting adventure. I stayed up all night imagining what I might find in the waters of the Peace River. I can see the headlines now. Read all about it, how to do Florida's Chad Crawford discovers new evidence of an ancient species paleontologists have been trying to dig up for centuries. Whoa. Huh, focus Chad, you're almost there. Another great thing about Wachula, it's close to everything. Whether you're coming from Tampa, Sarasota, or Orlando, you're only about an hour and change away from some of the finest fossil hunting Florida has to offer. Wachula was named by the Florida Southern Railroad, which built this train depot in 1886, which still exists today. Wachula is so rich in history that it's part of the Natural Trust for Historic Preservation's Main Street Center. But the century-old charm of this quaint little town doesn't compare to what lies beneath the waters of the nearby Peace River. Which reminds me, I need to get a haircut before the news crews get here to cover the fossil find of the century. Just a little once over. Yeah, just a, just a pop is what I need. There we go. Jimmy Waldron, president of the Florida Fossil Hunters Club, is gonna be showing us how to get our hands on some Florida history. But first things first, we're going to need more than just a curious mind to hunt for fossils. So this is everything we need right here. This is just about everything. This is the tools of the trade, right? These are the tools of the trade. The most important thing that you'll need, though, is actually the Florida fossil hunting permit. If you're going to collect anything in, this, in the state of Florida that's not shark's teeth, uh, anything that's from a vertebrate animal, you will need to have a permit and the fossils need to be reported. So what do we have right here? What is this? What we have here is one of the most important tools as well. This is a fossil hunting screen uh, or a strainer as we like to call it. This device will actually um, separate out the bits of fossil from the dirt and leaves and other bits of detritus that you don't want. So it's a floaty strainer thing? A floaty strainer thing. And then how do we get dirt inside there? Probably the most efficient way is using this thing right here. This is just a ordinary small garden shovel. So no backhoes? No backhoes, no. The permit states though that everything has to be less than four feet. This basically assures that you won't do too much damage. That's the idea. Okay, what's next? We have our handy guides. Uh, okay. These are different bits of information, whether they're identification charts or actual maps or even a, a big book like this one that'll actually show you what you're finding. Now this is kind of an optional item. This is something that many paleontologists bring out with them when they go fossil hunting. Uh, you can actually keep a record of when and where you were when you found the particular fossil. Is this T-Rex hide? What is this? No, this is actually a uh, late Lambiosaur. Lambiosaur! So Jimmy and I headed on down to the river where we were joined by Russell Brown, who has over 40 years as a paleo enthusiast. Is there a sandwich shop up here? Or like uh, you're supposed to bring the sandwiches. Russell is also an expert on fossil hunting on the Peace River. Well, one of the big things that everybody wants to come when they come to Peace River, of course, are these mammoth teeth. And these teeth, they can weigh up to about eight, nine pounds a piece. That's one tooth. Gosh, you've got to be kidding me. Mm -mm. So is this where it happens? This is where we're going to get started. How's that feel? Oh, over the boot. Yep. Down the ankle, between the toes. Exactly where it goes, right? This is a big river, Jimmy. How do you know where to start looking? One of the first things that we look for is a place where we can easily get access to the water. Most of the fossils we look for, though, are found in gravel beds. You'll see pockets of gravel, little bits of black and different colored things, and that's a good place to start looking. And what you're really looking for is a difference in the sound on your shovel. Oh, that's my toe. Got a piece of a tortoise shell, some whale vertebrae. Take a look, that's actually part of the carapace of a turtle. Really? That's a fossilized piece of turtle shell. Which one shovel's yours? Uh, the Mine's one the one's hot from working. Yeah, so yours yeah. is the cold one. Oh, Jimmy. What you got, Chad? Look at that, man. Shark's tooth. Oh yeah. What kind of shark? That is the tooth of an extinct mako shark. Oh man, that is beautiful. Make sure you check river levels prior to your trip. The lower the river, the easier it will be to see and find fossils. I decided to check on Russell to see what he had found. How you doing, Russell? Hey, Chad, what's going on, buddy? Find anything? Yeah, I found a few things. Yeah? Man, I've been tearing it up down here. This is what I've been getting. 
Oh my gosh. Russell, why is the Peace River such a popular place to come look for fossils? Well, one is it has such a mecca of fossils that can be found here. But you can't do this on like a St. John's or no. an Econ Peace or a Wekaiba. Peace River is one of the few rivers where you're allowed to come out and legally fossil collect. And people come from all over the states just for that one reason. This is kind of the, the ultimate treasure hunt. It, it's like every shovel, it's kind of this glimpse back into time. Can families do this? Absolutely, families can do this. Some of the most important finds that have actually been uncovered have been by kids because they have a little bit more curiosity than adults do. Okay, so here's what we know. First, you need a permit. It's cheap, it's easy, but remember, it's mandatory. You gotta have one. Come prepared with a fossil hunting screen. You know, the floaty strainer thing. Make sure your shovel is no longer than four feet long. You'll need your fossil hunting field guide. Don't forget the water and sunscreen. The fossil hunting fun will be short-lived if you're dehydrated and sunburned. The feeling of picking up this thing that no human eyes have seen in up maybe 35 million years. Yeah. It's truly an amazing feeling to have that and be the first set of eyes to lock onto this. Okay, so I didn't make any major discoveries today. But what I did discover is that fossil hunting is a hands-on opportunity to step back in time to a Florida we can only imagine. 